I tell you about adventurers called conquistadores, those Spaniards who went off seeking fortune in America. You remember, we've already heard about Christopher Columbus. Naturally. <laughs> well, and Cortez in Mexico. Pizarro, who went to, to Peru. Well, now, let's go back a little in time and take another look. Mm. Mm. I said we'll be going back in time. Let's go. There we are. Now, we're in 1513. Let me tell you a bit about Nunez de Balboa, who, after a troublesome voyage caused by a false maneuver on the part of his second-in-command, Pizarro, somehow found the Pacific Ocean and solemnly claimed possession of it in the name of their Catholic majesties. But the short-tempered governor, Pedrarius, had a score to settle with Balboa, who, as it happens, is his son-in-law. With help from that same Pizarro, he has him decapitated, and in those days, you might hear anything said of the Indies. Some said that there lived blue men with square heads, <laughs> and other men who had only one leg. Some swore there were unicorns, dwarfs, giants. Some sailors swore they saw a golden man. And even mermaids. <laughs> and dragons. Only oh, it's not true. How, How could, could anybody, anybody really believe that? But they did believe it, and fervently. Look here, some were sure on Bimini Island there was a fountain of youth. Yes, an old person could bathe in it and be young again. Well, I'd be willing to give it a try. That's right, a fountain that would restore youth. <laughs> oh, yes, Ponce de Leon, who was no spring chicken at the time. Imagine, he was 53. Well, he believed there was a fountain of youth, and he even became governor of Bimini for that. He was an old soldier who had been companion to Columbus and to Cortez. Hey, you see it, Lopez? I saw some branches moving over there. Indians, perhaps. Take your men and have a look. Yes, Commander. Have a look. <gasps> of course, how stupid. I have to drink the water, of course. Ah, ah. <laughs> oh, yes, that's done it. I do. I feel young again. <laughs> And on Easter Day, 1513... Ah, oh, all these flowers, really a pretty sight. Now, in the name of our sovereign king, I take possession of this land, Pasqua, Florida. Yes, flowering Easter, and hence the name Florida. Uh, Ponce de Leon would explore this land, sometimes at great inconvenience to himself. During one of his explorations, he discovered the Gulf Stream. And, of course, the land that would later be called Cape Canaveral. Oh. <laughs> he must have been the first European to set foot on the future USA. <laughs> later in Florida, Ponce de Leon will be seriously wounded. Oh, yes, he'll die in Cuba a few days later. Some years later, Panfilo de Narvaez, the one who had been sent to fight Cortez, is named governor. From Florida to Mexico. Of course, it still remained to conquer the region. <laughs> Cabeza de Vaca, cow's head. I must say, it is certainly a very curious name. Sir! I am very proud of my name. My forefathers earned it by charging the enemy with bullhorns having no weapons. I am well aware you are all valiant, brave soldiers here. I've decided to take you with me to Florida. I am the new governor. You will be in command of a ship, and you will also be treasurer of the expedition. So, will you accept? Mm-hmm. Sign there. I agree, Governor Narvaez. Cast 
off our moorings. Santo Domingo was selected as the first port of call. But with all the disorder and uncertainty of the expedition, 150 men see their chance and jump ship. Send two boats to Trinidad for our provisions. In this weather, sir? You just follow orders, right? This is how the expedition lost two vessels and 160 men. I have purchased it. Now we can leave for Florida. Do you have a pretty good idea how to get there? No, but I was lucky. I found a navigator who knows the region, Miruello. I, I, I know my way around here. With Ponce de Leon, we looked for the, phone, uh, the, phone, uh, the, the fountain of youth. Yes, we did. And did you ever find it? Not exactly. We got lost. Bad luck. Right hand down a bit. We steer a starboard uh, course. Uh, that's the port side, oh, Miruello, not starboard. Oh, yes, of course. Th that's what I meant. To port, steer a course. Oh. Look over there. Aren't we headed for shallow water? Uh, don't worry. There's no shallow around here. Nothing to worry about here. You can sail with your eyes shut. Something strange going on. Looks like deep water's shallower around here. Uh, don't worry about a thing. I know it like the back of my hand. In an hour or two, we'll be up and on our way. All we need is a little more water. This is nothing. With Ponce to lay on, this happened all the time. But in a few hours, it was up and on our way. Believe it, old sea dog. This is just one of those things you learn to live without here. Now, just be patient. <laughs> the ships remained stuck for two weeks until another storm that set them floating again, just as everyone had given up hope in the expedition. And suddenly, they reached their objective, Tampa Bay in Florida, the very spot where Ponce de Leon had been mortally wounded. They say there are many like this one up in the country they call Apalachia. Yes, Apalachia, that way, that way, you go. The decision is made. We will go on foot, the ships will sail up the coast and join us later. There's a sheltered <laughs> port that Miruello knows. Look here, Navarez, consider, can you really trust a man like him? We'd best not leave our ships or we're lost. Assemble the men on deck now, that's an order! No, this expedition is madness. All of you are going to die. Think clearly. All the dangers are waiting you. Quite possibly some among us are bound to die. But for the others, there will be wealth, glory, and fame, and power. Our husbands are going off, risking their lives, not caring about us. All right, when they have gone, we will forget them. We will find new husbands, right? Right. And off they went, 300 men, mostly to die. It's the last morsel. Now we have no more food. Well, the coast can't be far now. The ships will be waiting for us. Well, in a pinch, we could cook up our horses. Apalachi. Strange men, they will die to get yellow metal. This is it, Apalachi, we're here. Santiago, get the enemy. No, no, don't do that. Stop, come back, come back. Where's your gold, your gold, answer. Where's it hidden? 
No gold? Not one grain of gold. They lied to us. All these men are no more than peasants. But you were wrong to attack them. It's not over yet. Look. Huh? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The ships still aren't here. If we stay here any longer, we'll starve to death. Uh, build us some boats. We will sail back to Mexico. Then during a violent storm, Narvaez disappeared forever. This is the man. You cure him. Save him, O oh almighty God, and you will save us as well. Enter! Only one. For years, uh, our friends practiced their newly acquired profession as healers. And, my golly, they had some success. But they were hoping for other things. And together with their new friends, they cross into Alabama and then into Mississippi and Louisiana, all the way to Texas, across the Rio Grande. And then they're back in Mexico, over 6,000 kilometers, and they did it in eight years. Indians, take them! We need slaves! Who are Christians? I'm a Spanish officer. Take me to your commander. Later, De Vaca was governor and then deprived of his title and put in prison. Do you know why? Just because he was too friendly with the Indians, whom he had learned to respect. Eh, such is life. Now, here we are again at Tampa Bay in Florida. Here we run into an old acquaintance of ours, Hernando de Soto. This brilliant horseman had performed a remarkable circus trip for the Inca, Atahualpa. And in time, he is appointed governor, and he too one day sets off looking for the cities of gold that Cabeza de Vaca had heard of. And he takes a real army with him, 600 men, over 200 horses, and some Indians. Look, Luis. Indians announcing our arrival. Yes, smoke signals everywhere. <laughs> oh, strange dog. I never saw a dog like that. You think he'd be good to eat? I don't know. Let's try him. <laughs> I am one of you. My name is Ortiz. I was a soldier in the expedition that was led by Narvaez. I have been a prisoner of the Indians for 12 years. The Indians? Are they as numerous and as rich as they say? Oh, they are poor. Very poor. Numerous. More than the trees in this forest. But they can hide in the forest like the very leaves on the trees. And all the same, it's said that up north there are villages of riches. I don't know where they are. You come along. We'll feed you and put clothes on your back worthy of a Spaniard. Heaven has sent you. You will be our interpreter with the Indians.
He says welcome to all of us coming to visit, and we are invited to spend the night in his village. Wouldn't you agree? It is very nice of him to receive us so kindly, Captain. Look at the splendid food they have provided. Have you noticed almost none of the men are here? I don't like this. I'll have a look. Alert, alert! It's a trap, a trap! Take cover, men! It's a trap! There they are. And they're going to pay heavily. Forward! standing on his stirrups, an arrow stuck in his buttock. <laughs> De Soto fought for five hours like that. Yeah, they were strapping fellows back then, with plenty of courage. All these losses and for nothing, Indians have deserted. We'll need slaves to replace them. Hey, listen, Hernando, all we have found here is misery and death for many. Don't you think it's better to give up here, return home? Our boats are waiting at Pensacola. It's six days' march. No, no, Luis. Remember Peru. It may be here, very near, or a little to the north or west. The Vaca said so. Sometimes I don't understand these Indians. They can be peaceful and give us all they have, and then they will attack us for no reason. No, it's quite simple, really. I mean, they will attack us if we try to steal from them or take them as slaves. It's a logical point of view. Oh, perhaps, but you don't create an empire with that sort of logic. You don't conquer. As for gold, they don't have much of it. Slaves, they could furnish some. No, tell them that we need 200 porters. Take up positions, just in case. We need porters, 200. Mm -hmm. We present you gifts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hasn't much changed, our friend DeSoto. Old ways mm -hmm. die hard, especially for a conquistador. Pontotoc, another bloody battle. Forty Spanish soldiers would lose their lives, and ten times more Indians. We have found only death and misery in this land of suffering. Yes, we shall go home. It's the only way. Hold! Four years, four long years, this nightmare journey went on, chasing an illusion, and over half the men already perished.
My dear friends, my faithful companions, I admit I was wrong. Throughout this long adventure, I never stopped dreaming of Peru, and there is no Peru here. It's all my fault. Luis will take you back to our people. Forgive me. And another brave man died pursuing a mad dream. But it's not over yet. Viceroy Mendoza is impatient, waiting for the brave De Soto, who himself is stuck in Alabama. While waiting, he raises an even bigger army, a thousand infantry soldiers, hundreds of cavalry, Indians, and it's the dashing young governor, Francisco Velasquez de Coronado, who will be in command. And this time, they will leave from Mexico and move up the Pacific coast. Are these the ones, the famous seven golden cities of Cibola? Gold, have you any gold? I am asking you if you have yellow metal, Chuck. Listen, mm -hmm. Aki River, father, mm -hmm. there is gold, mm -hmm. much gold, and there are rivers where there are fish, big mm -hmm. fish, gold fish, great, great, large as that, and very big canoes, mm -hmm. and the figures on the prow are eagles, golden eagles, yes, golden. That way? No, that way. It's that way! That way? No, that way. No. That way! For a year, they would go in quest of their El Dorado, their city of gold, coming and going, wandering like lost souls. Ask him if he knows where yellow metal is any gold. Ask him how we can get to Kiriva. Kiriva is one day's march that way. I will take you there if you want me to. Tell him we accept. He will lead us to Kiriva. Ask him if he knows yellow metal and where to find some. Yes, he says he knows where, and it's just like his necklace. That's copper, not gold. Say you, you're the one who said there was plenty of gold around here. You know what happens to traitors? <laughs> Another total failure. The era of the great conquerors is now drawing to a close. Oh, there will still be Cabrillo, Unamo, Vizcaino, Onate, Merendez, and others, but never again would anyone witness the miraculous success of Cortez and Pizarro, before whose armies enemy forces parted, as the Red Sea before Moses. But all the same, it certainly seems that a strange curse followed our conquistadores. Remember the sad fate awaiting Christopher Columbus, the discoverer of America, who was already abandoned by everybody. To the end is, if I'd been given more time, <laughs> the miserable end of Cortez, weary of this world, Alvarado, his seething second in command, off a precipice on horseback, Pizarro and his brothers, Francisco, his throat cut by Almagro's son, Juan, his younger brother, stoned to death by the Indians, Gonzalo decapitated for rebelling, Almagro strangled in his cell. Diego, his son, executed in the same place as his father. Balboa, falsely accused of treason. Ponce de Leon died from his wounds. Narvaez, lost at sea. De Soto, the valiant, worn out by fever. And cast into the Mississippi River. And all the others. No, even if fate brought them glory, destiny was not kind to these men. These conquistadores, with all their faults and excesses, made theirs an exceptional century, the conquest of a new world. Once upon a time, the Americas are a story that can be 